Welcome back to Disco Elysium, where today, Superstar and Kim discover a place that can only be called the Murder Wall. So we're still looking around for Lena's husband, the scientist. And I believe the cryptozoologic creature that they purportedly found was near water or something like that, near the reeds. It's supposed to look like a reed. So we will potentially find some clues as to his disappearance. Could use a little running. Clear our heads. Quick travel unlocked for a church. Oh, that church that we heard about is over here. Okay, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Guys. 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 A lot of walking. Guys are getting their 10,000 steps in for sure. Alright, 45 cents. Hey. Wait, what, what are you doing, Superstar? No boat in the boathouse today. This section of the coast hasn't been used in decades. Oh. Magnesium. Great, because we were out. And then, oversized superstar sunglasses. Well. Uh-huh. Those glasses literally have our name on them. Boathouse is shoddily constructed. A strong breeze might blow it over. Oh, but there's some kind of storage container. Buck 15! Very nice. A wall we can look at, and then this overhang, I guess. Ancient paint is peeling off the roof of this shaded bench, covered in rust. What is this thing? Is this another art wall? A scattering of bullet holes is spread across the cracked wall, reaching from one corner to the other. There is a heroic visual calculus check where we can ask why this many bullet holes. But first we're going to put on, I believe we have some visual calculus equipment, so let's put that on. Okay, clothing. Oh, I forgot to put on our bow tie. Damn it. Nope. Oh, here we go. Okay. Let's put on our RCM commander's jacket. And try again. A scattering of bullet holes is spread across the cracked wall, reaching from one corner to the other. Why this many bullet holes? A row of ghostly shades stand facing the wall. There are many of them, a dozen at least. The heads lowered and eyes blindfolded. It's quiet, no sound. No movement. Oh my gosh, look, it was a firing squad. That's horrible. And check this out. By putting on our jacket, we just made it. We needed 15, we got 15. Let's see what happens next. Are we going to actually watch them fire? 10 meters away, other shades are lined up in an orderly manner. Automatic rifles prime. A gust of wind blows by. The coats of the firing squad flap slowly in the breeze. A single person stands on the side. Oh man, this is gonna be bad. The morning sun rises beyond the horizon, oh. radiating the first light of the day. The order was carried out at dawn. A long time has passed since the moment of this fusillading. Rain and brine have since washed all the blood away. Not a trace remains. What is this? The abundance of bullet holes leads to two options. Either an inordinate amount of executions were performed here, or they did not use a conscience round, where only one soldier has the loaded rifle. Looks like this was a mass execution with everyone fully armed. Wow. Look at the people against the wall. A host of men, probably in everyday clothes, ragged from the conflict and covered in dust. They were not sitting, a common practice for executions in some nations. As demonstrated by the height level of the bullet holes, they stand, facing the wall. It's impossible to discern any details about their personality or background. They stand facing the wall, so they were shot in the back. That's terrible. Look at the line of soldiers. Seven men in combat uniforms and dark coats, holding automatic rifles aimed at the people. 
Soldiers from some side. But from which one? Does it really matter? Look at the person standing on the side. The Commandant. The one who gives the order. Machine gun fire crackling through the air. The lights of the muzzle flashes dancing on his face. Him, who was who in this execution? I don't know that it matters. I don't know. I don't know who died here, lined up beside that horrible wall. It could have been any of the parties involved in the revolution. Uh-huh, and it doesn't really matter. Perhaps the ones executed here were the loyalist conservatives killed by the communists at the start of the civil war. Or it could have been the communists put to death during the last stretch of the conflict by the coalition forces. Yeah, the truth is that rarely does any side win a war. It's just who loses less, I guess. It could even have been the employees of the failed R&D center down the coast, as their building was taken over by the revolutionaries. Wow, total innocence. Or maybe... You mentioned coalition forces? Could it have been them against the wall? Yeah. It's very unlikely the coalition forces were the ones who died here. They were always the last ones against the wall. Oh, interesting. To be honest, if a coalition member was anyone in this situation, it was a commandant. The superior giving the orders. Okay, thanks, Kim. That's shitty. Goodbye. A cold sea wind blows away the figures. Well, that was rough. Okay, let's go back down here. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so people on the phone can see better. But I don't know where we should go next. I want to try to avoid the church for now. Thinking maybe we should head back to the fishing village. Oh, hey, wait, there's somebody right over here. Let's see what this guy's up to. Oh, I wonder if this is Lena's husband. Whoa, it is. Here we go. Nice and easy. No way out, little guys. Not out of this gym. There's a cylinder on the ground in which the man is arranging some netting. It looks like some kind of trap. He notices you. Yeah, and if he's setting him up, he clearly hasn't caught the uh, cryptozoological bug. Who's there? Oh, the police. Hello, officers. Hello, Morel. His self-conscious enthusiasm renders his movements ungainly. He looks like your understanding of a scientist. Not that we're judging. Is that the police? Why are the police here? Looks like Gary has some kind of crown or halo. That's funny. Don't worry, Gary. I'll handle it. You must be Morel, the cryptozoologist. To what do I owe the pleasure? Well, your wife is looking for you. That's sarcasm. He takes no pleasure from your appearance. Let's uh, investigate that. You don't seem too happy to see the RCM. Oh, no. It's all right. I'm just busy. What's this about? Lena sent me. She's been really worried about you and is waiting for you to get back. Hey, of course. Thank you for passing along the message. That damn water lock is broken, and we can't go all the way around the 881. Aha, but it is fixed now. The 881 is a raised motorway that separates Martinez from Jamrock. The labyrinth of streets underneath it makes it difficult to park. Yeah, we're not going to volunteer that I broke it. That's ridiculous. The water lock's been fixed. It was fine when I crossed it. We can withhold the whole story. Ah, oh, good. We should really be getting back. Gary could use a hot shower and a warm bed. Yeah, I bet you could as well, my Aussie friend. Did he say we can go back now? He sure did. Yes, Gary! We can go soon! If you see Lena, tell her I won't be long. Thanks, Morel. Not like you're rushing back, it sounds like. Sir, your wife is waiting for you. Yeah. I just have to do one more round. See if the phasmid has taken the bait. Then we go in. Tell me about this phasmid you're looking for. Hmm. Well, first of all, it's damn difficult to find, which is why we've been knee-deep in the reeds laying traps for it. What makes it so difficult to find? Could it be that it doesn't exist? Good question. Being a phasmid of the order Phantasmodea, a ghost insect, it disguises itself as plant matter. In this case, the reeds. Awful lot of reeds around. Aren't they? They sure are. And I suspect it may have also developed other specialized techniques to protect itself from predators, or scientists, in our present case. So I once read a book about cryptozoology. There was something in it called the coelacanth, which is this fish that, if it ever existed, 
it had gone extinct like a hundred years before or so they thought and then one day some scientist was in i don't remember who was the philippines or thailand and it turned out that the peasant people had been catching a coelacanth all the time there was one just right there in the market so you just never know what's out there what sorts of specialized techniques is the phasmid using to hide itself this my hypothesis that it has evolved certain electrochemical defenses that allow it to interfere with animal perception, impeding pattern recognition, confusing the visual cortex. That seems pretty complicated for a little bug. But I cannot describe how these defenses work, much less how they evolve, without studying a live specimen. A ghost insect, he said. These people are looking for a ghost. I mean, certainly that's the consensus of everybody else. I'd like to think that we are withholding judgment. How big is this phasmid? Well, I'm expecting it to be quite giant. One known species of phasmid, called the Megaphasmodea zoensis, is about the size of a grown man's forearm. So, uh... He leaves the conclusion up to us. It didn't really seem like he answered it. Seems puny, to be honest. Wow, physical instrument. Ghost insects. So you're ghost hunters? No. That is precisely what we're not. We are zoological specialists, looking for an extant species of phasmid. I guess so. And what have you discovered so far, Morel? Very little, I'm sorry to say. No one's ever captured a specimen, so all our information is based on first and third hand accounts. So no one's ever found one? Not yet. That's what makes it a cryptid. I guess so, that's the definition, I think. <clears throat> Just out of curiosity, if there's no proof of its existence, how do you know it's real? Well, wait a minute. That applies to, to God, and many people believe in God. I know it's real. The cryptozoologist says brusquely enough that even he seems taken aback by it. Maybe the insulinian phasmid has died out? I have to resist the thought. Such an extraordinary creature is doubtlessly highly resilient. After all, it's generally thought to be capable of parthenogenesis. Parthenogenesis? I don't really know what that means. He means asexual reproduction. The females of the species don't need to mate to produce viable eggs. This makes it easier for a species with a small population to survive. Ah, you know, that does ring a bell. Maybe I learned that in some class at school. Females reproducing without males? A travesty, a crime against passion and common sense. No, he's not that guy. How about, that's pretty clever. Yes, Insulindian phasmid is a very clever insect. That's why it's so damn difficult to catch. But as a scientist, I'll try my best to remain dispassionate. Tell me more about these traps. Well, they may not look impressive, but Lena designed them quite cleverly. So I'm sure they'll do the trick. Lena designed the traps? Yes. He says with some pride. How do the traps work? Simple. Attracted by the locusts, the phasmid crawls down the funnel and, having eaten its fill, can get back out. At least, that's the intention. The net isn't a perfect solution, but we didn't want to use anything that might damage the specimen's delicate exoskeleton. What will you do if these traps don't work? They'll work, I assure you. The predatory hypothesis, using locusts as bait, accounts for the failure of previous efforts by other teams, which use plants. We have given this some thought. Oh, I have no doubt that you and Lena have given this a lot of thought. A ridiculous amount of thought, maybe. Let me ask you about something else. Yes. What? So you have never discovered a cryptid? No. Very few cryptids are ever discovered, and not for a lack of trying. To stay hidden is a cryptid's primary quality. It's even in the name, cryptid. So how many cryptids have been found? Of the list of cryptids kept by the Cryptozoological Society of Shemni, which is 4,082 items long, about 2,000 have been confirmed as hoaxes. Oh, that's not a good percentage, but even one, I think, one real one would be pretty neat. Two are categorized as confirmed discoveries. The rest are in differing stages of discovery refutation, and data collection. See, this is, this is pretty cool, because though a lot of people don't believe these guys, 
the both the quagga and the okapi were also thought as cryptids for a long time. And though the quagga has died out, it's gone extinct, the okapi sure exists. Only two have proven to be real? Yes, the Chateau Quan Forest Pygmy, who turned out to be an extinct species of primate, and a cave salamander from Hugo Grad, who is, honestly, quite unremarkable. It's in a zoo somewhere. But it was still a cryptid, you should be happy that it was discovered. We cryptozoologists are brutally honest with ourselves, more so even than the public. With cryptids, most cryptids are hoaxes or they are never found. That does not mean we should stop searching. Not approvingly, then the Insulinian Phasmid will be the third. Let's encourage this guy, why not? Indeed. If our expedition is successful, every paper in the world will report on it. From Revachol to Dushan too. It will be a zoological miracle. Maybe, or probably most people just won't give a shit. He has clearly done his math on this. There is no surprising him or swaying his opinion. Enough tales then, let's change the subject. By all means. <coughs> oh, you coming down with something? Lena seems pretty eager for you to return. And I'm eager to return to her, I assure you. But I can't leave before we finish with these traps. My wife understands that just as well as anyone. He looks south where Lena would be. Come on, Morel. We've been soaking out here for days. It's time to go back. Yeah, it seems like Gary is not quite as persistent. And leave the traps? Absolutely not. I won't let Lena down. Come on, she wants us back. I'm soaked up to my nuts over here. We'll both catch reed crabs if we don't dry out soon. I didn't know the Fassman was so important to Lena. Of course it's important to her. She's seen it. A verified sighting, on record. One of only four this century, and it's hers. Really? She sighted the Fassman? She didn't tell me that. Yes. That's how we first came to know one another, in fact. But that's her story to tell, not mine. <laughs> Suffice to say, it's long been our dream to find proof of the Insulindian Phasmid together. I can't abandon course now. He definitely seems like he's coming down with something. Maybe you could go back up to the Whirling, warm up, come back to check the traps later? No, no, no. The traps need to be monitored on a regular schedule. We do if the Phasmid were to starve while we were sipping tea at the hostel. Yeah, well, what would Lena do if you got sick and died out here? What if we check the traps for you? I didn't expect you to take such an interest in our work here, officer. Cryptozoology and detective work are very similar. Yes, indeed. Both require a great deal of research, attention to detail, and, above all, persistence. And where are these traps? There are four in total. One is to the south, on this little peninsula, by the boathouses there. It's very near. Another we set in Land's End, to the northeast. It's behind a small sand dune there, on your way to the old radio tower, after the church. Okay. The third is set near the canal, where you crossed, by a concrete slab. A big thicket of reeds going up the slope, and among them, you should check at least one of those before returning to this one, since I just said it. This one's more of a technicality, but still, better safe and stupid than sorry. All right, fair enough. That seems like a lot. Do we really have time for this extracurricular venture? Kim, first of all, what just happened with the light? That was weird. Kim, you know what? The pursuit of knowledge is its own justification, Kim. Is it? He doesn't look too convinced, but the small shrugging indicates why not. What do I do if there's a phasmin in one of the traps? Bring it to me at once. Just make sure the trap is closed tight. That seems like something we're gonna boot. He's not comfortable with the possibility that you'll claim the find, but he's lying about this even to himself. Yeah, I get that. What if I encounter a phasmin in the wild? That's highly unlikely, officer. But in the event you do, I'll spray you with a pheromone mixture I developed. Oh. Okay, well, what will that do? It's made of musk and research chemicals. The pheromone should attract the insect to you, or at least prevent it from bolting at the side of you. It's quite potent. will last you about a week. 
Ooh, I wonder what else it'll attract. Lay it on me, thick. Present our armpit. He douses you with the odd smelling spray, a double helping as you present your other armpit, and then gives you a satisfied nod. I hope you're not buying this. He dispenses it without letting you touch the canister, so it would be precious like holy water. Kim. It is precious. A single dose cost me 50 real to develop. Not that I expect you to understand self-financing one's own research. He looks at the lieutenant with disdain, then puts the spray back in his pocket. I'm ready, let's get to it. Right, which means you two can pack up and go back to the whirling. Yeah, get out of here, guys. Finally, someone's talking sense. Okay, Gary, well, you could have gone kind of the second we showed up. Thank you for your help. Gary and I will start breaking down, Cameron. If you have any more questions, now's the time to ask. We'll be gone once you get to it. I think we got everything. Thanks, Morel. I'll get going. We'll talk to Gary and ask Morel any remaining questions next time. For now, if you feel I have earned it, please give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. Regardless, please remember to have your pets spayed or neutered, but not both.